Hi guys, this is Joel Wells with FLIR Systems at T Equipment. Uh, right now I have a T1020 camera connected to uh, Research IR software. I'm just going to go ahead and show you some of the benefits of this right now. So we've connected to the camera um, and you can do so up here by clicking camera, select, and then connect. Um, and it'll display the, the camera that's currently connected to your, cam to your computer. Um, first thing we're going to do here is so we now have a live image um, and we're currently looking at a, a desktop computer with the front panel taken off so we're, we're looking at the actual boards here and uh, you see the color palette right now is displayed uh, in a kind of a multicolored fashion this is the palette we call one two three four so you have the ability to change the color palette here um, and you have a number of options. So one, two, three, four is what we have now. Uh, another very popular one is uh, Iron Bow. And you'll see here we, uh, we can clearly see which components are hot in this image and what some of the cooler components are. We can go ahead and change that. I'm gonna change it back to one, two, three, four. And below the image here, you'll see an image enhancement window. And what this shows is a histogram of the number of temperatures and how frequently they occur in the image. So when you default connect to the camera, its default state is called from image. So what it does is it looks at all the temperatures in the frame and scales that accordingly. What you can do is you can drag either end of this and scale the color palette to your liking. And this will emphasize certain components on the board that are hotter the, than others. Another useful tool is the regions of interest tool, which allows you to separate certain areas and collect data from those areas. And to the left of the image, you'll see different icons here showing different regions of interest you can use. In this case, we're just gonna start with a rectangle right here. And we're gonna go ahead and draw that around this integrated circuit right here. Now we've split off that data from the rest of the image and there's a few things that we can do with it now. So if you go up above the image here you'll see this icon that says statistics viewer and when we hover it over it you'll see some other tools here. When I click that a statistics window will come up and show you a number of different values that are occurring in that region of interest. So the mean value is 44.8 degrees. We have a center value, a minimum, and a maximum. And then we also see the number of pixels contained within that region of interest. Now another thing we can do here is we can go ahead and plot this. So there's two options for plotting. We can plot profile or we can plot temporally. The profile is a spatial plot so you can choose to plot in either the horizontal or vertical axis, and it'll show you the temperatures across the across whatever axis you've selected. Now what I'll do here is the temporal plot, which plots the data in that region of interest with respect to time. So now we see a plot as these frames are streaming to the computer of the average temperature within that box. And if we click this double black arrow to the right of the plot, we'll see different options here. For box one, if we click that, we'll see we can plot the mean, min, or max temperature. Now what we'll do here is we'll plot another region of interest and we'll plot this fan that's currently running on this CPU. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we did previously and click temporal plot. Now this creates a new plot that's plotting the mean temperature within that box, which we've named box two. If you wanna display these together, you can hover over this, click it, and then hover over, hover over your previous plot and drop it into this icon that shows the plot below. And now we're currently plotting both temperatures over time. 
and you can do this for any number of regions of interest within research IR. So another valuable feature of research IR is the ability to record streaming video files with full radiometric data. Radiometric data is representative of a per pixel temperature in the entire field of view of the camera. This is different from most cameras in that most IR cameras that are handheld are designed to take single images. When connected to a computer, we can now stream video at up to 30 frames per second and capture all that data to the computer. So what I'm gonna do here is set up a recording. This is the recording button, and each of these icons will display the last tool you used from that selection. So I'm gonna click record settings here, and this allows us to choose how we wanna record the data file. So we have a number of options. We can record to memory. This is the most reliable, though computers nowadays can most likely record to disk with no issues. So that's what we're gonna do. And you have options to record a certain number of frames, a certain time base, or just start stop. And that's what we're gonna do here. Down below, you'll see a record to file. So this is where it's gonna save your file. And this is the naming convention here. So we're gonna to select to include text and we're gonna call this file T equipment. We're gonna select text and then we're gonna type in T equipment. And we're ready to go for our recording. Now we can simply hit the record button here we can also hit the hotkey F5 to begin a recording. This dialog box will pop up and show the number of frames that we are recording. Since we're just doing this for a demonstration purpose, we'll go ahead and stop that. And now that file has saved. And down below built into Research IR is a file explorer. And so we can select that file and there's an icon here that allows us to set this directory to the directory we set as a recording. So I'm gonna click that. And now we'll see T equipment right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this file. And we can see the file that we just recorded. One of the best features of Research IR is the ability to export your data in a number of different formats. And we'll explore that here. So if we go up here and click File, Export, we'll see here we have options for export type and export format. Currently, we have it set to export type current image, and that's going to grab a single frame, which is currently frame 48, and then we can look at the format that we want to export that in. We can do it in a CSV, which will open up in Excel, and what that will be is a full array of the pixels of the camera in each temperature value in those cells. We can open that up in Excel or any other uh, software that'll open CSVs. Now we have a number of other options, bitmap, PNG, JPEG, radiometric JPEG. There's two different types of formats that we'd wanna focus on here. In this case, JPEG is gonna be simply an image that you can open in any photo software. The radiometric JPEG is gonna have the flexibility of being able to be opened in any photo software, but can also be opened in FLIR software where we can get access to that radiometric temperature data. You'll see here we have another few file types that we can export to. And one of those is MATLAB. That's really unique to um, the FLIR Research IR software. You can export this in a .mat file and then open that up in MATLAB and view the data there. That gives you the ability to run any additional math or algorithm on that data and correct for anything that um, may have played a role in your scene. So another option is to export type multiple image or movie. 
And a movie is going to be simply that, a movie file that you can play on any computer. Or we can click multiple images and it will export all of the frames of the image, all of the frames of the video in whatever format we select. So this has been a brief overview of the FLIR Research IR software when being used with the T1020 camera. If you have any questions, please contact T Equipment. Thank you for watching.